Hello friends, wanted to read you a story today. Let's sing, sing the story song, you ready? Knock on the door, turn the knob, peek inside, walk on in. Ready? Quietly. One, two, three. Shut the door. This story is my favorite. It is a story I've read for many years to my son. It's called The Elves and the Shoemaker. It's a really wonderful story about a man and his wife, they're shoemakers, and what happens in the middle of the night when they sleep. So please follow along. It's a bit of a long story. So mom and dad, if you have something to do, now is a good time to go do it. We've probably got maybe 10 minutes, okay? Okay, here we go. The Elves and the Shoemaker. Once upon a time, there was a kind old shoemaker who lived in a tiny flat above his shop with his wife. He had many bills to pay, so he had to work from dawn to dusk to pay them off. The day came when he had only a few pennies left, just enough to buy leather for one final pair of shoes. That evening, by candlelight, the shoemaker cut up the leather, then leaving it on his workbench, he picked up the candle and he wearily climbed the stairs to bed. What's gonna happen? Let's see. He only has enough. This will be the last pair of shoes he makes. The next morning, when he came down to shop, the shoemaker could not believe his eyes. There on his workbench, where the leather had been, was the finest pair of shoes he'd ever seen. The shoemaker went to the stairs and called to his wife to come see what, it fa what he found. Did you make these shoes, he asked. Of course not, she replied. The shoemaker was very puzzled and he scratched his head in amazement. Then who could have done it, he wondered. The shoemaker put his shoes in his window shop. And that afternoon, a fine gentleman came to try them on. He liked the shoes very much and he gave the shoemaker a good price for them. With the money, the shoemaker was able to buy food for dinner and he had enough left over to buy leather to make two more pairs of shoes. Later that night, the shoemaker cut up the leather and he left it lying on his workbench. I'll finish the shoes in the morning, he yawned. Oh, shutting the shop up for the night, he picked up the candle and he went upstairs to bed. The next morning, he came downstairs and the shoemaker was truly amazed. There, sitting neatly on his workbench, were two fine pairs of beautiful new shoes. They were soft and delicate. He thought they were the best shoes he'd ever seen. Once again, the shoemaker called his wife and he asked her, Oh, did you make these shoes? Oh, husband, she said, of course I didn't. The shoemaker was very confused, but once again, he put them in a shop window where everyone could see them. And in no time at all, he had sold both pairs of shoes for a very good price. That evening, the shoemaker and his wife had a marvelous dinner. There was also enough money left to buy leather shoes to make four new pairs of shoes. Once more, the shoemaker cut out the leather and he left it neatly on his workbench. And in the morning, there were new shoes waiting for him when he came downstairs. And so it went on for weeks. Every night, the shoemaker cut out the leather and he left it on his workbench. And every morning, there were splendid shoes waiting to be sold. Soon, the shoemaker and his wife were quite wealthy but they still did not know who was making the smart shoes that appeared in the shop as if by magic. One cold wintry night, just before Christmas, the shoemaker and his wife decided they had to solve the mystery once and for all. 
So after the shoemaker left the leather on his workbench, he shut up the shop and he hid in a big cupboard slightly open so that they could see. And he waited and he waited and waited. And when the clock struck midnight, 12 o'clock, there was a tiny noise from the dark chimney. It grew louder. Suddenly, two tiny elves appeared in a shower of magical stars. They ran straight to the workbench and they began to stitch and sew until they had made five beautiful pairs of shoes. They sang as they worked. There isn't any time to lose. We must make these fine new shoes. As soon as the shoes were finished, they hopped off the workbench and they shot up the chimney and the shoemaker and his wife were amazed. Do you see them hiding right there in the cupboard? The shoemaker and his wife wanted to do something in return for the kind little elves, but what could they do? Oh, they must be frozen in those thin tattered clothes, said the shoemaker. Yes, said his wife, and their feet are bare, although they make shoes, but they have no shoes of their own. So the shoemaker's wife made two little jackets and two pairs of trousers. She knitted four little woolly socks to keep their feet warm and two tiny hats for their heads. The shoemaker made two pairs of small boots fastened with tiny silver buckles. Here's the picture. Tiny clothes for the little elves. They're gonna be so excited. That evening, the little they wrapped the little clothes in tissue paper and they left them on the workbench and then they hid in the cupboard and they waited. At the stroke of midnight, the elves appeared. They were puzzled when they saw parcels instead of leather. Parcels are little packages. But when they opened the presents, they were overjoyed. They put on their new clothes and they danced around the shop singing, See what handsome boys we are. We will work on shoes no more. They danced happily across the floor. They flew up the chimney and they were gone in a flash. And here's the presents. The elves did not return but the man and his wife never forgot the two tiny men and all the work they had done. The shoemaker continued to make shoes, which were fine and beautiful, and he became rich and famous across the land, but none compared to the light and delicate shoes that the little elves had made. They all lived happily ever after. The end. Isn't that a lovely story? This was my son Tyler's favorite story, the, sh the Elves and the Shoemaker. And we would read it every single night for years. So I thought you would enjoy this. It, it's a really special story and one that you can read over and over and over. So we will start sending books and stories for you to listen to. Um, I know Miss Susan's sending one out to the twos on Monday. So you will have a lot of good things to look for. We hope you have a wonderful weekend.